Episode 25, Sorna Parting. In the aquarium, Tim and Sarah had encountered a spiderweb had appeared on the glass where the Tylosaurus inside the tank had hit it with full force. Sarah looks up as she is sitting on the floor, seeing water come seeping through. Oh no! Come on! She quickly gets up and starts running back to the entrance of the viewing room. Tim already near the door. The second hit of the animal made it come crashing through. The room quickly floods and both Tim and Sarah are caught in the stream as they move back to the door and the stairs beyond. Tim misses the doors by an inch and is dragged back to the room. Sarah washed against the doors too, caught grip and kept hanging tight to the doorway. The Tylosaurus now lies growling on the platform where it came through the glass. The water not yet deep enough for it to swim. Snapping its jaws in frustration, moving its huge body forward feet by feet like a seal. As the water is pushing Tim forward round the rotunda, he barely misses the Tylosaurus as he passes it. She closes in on the doorway again. Grab my hand! Sarah is reaching out for him as she closes him. He catches her hand as he passes and she pulls him to the door, just as the water hits the end of the round room, turning and coiling back to the front along the walls. Getting up on their feet, both Sarah and Tim are having difficulty to hold on, as the water now hits them from all sides. Sarah looks back, just to see the back of the Tylosaurus disappear on the water, now moving forward faster. Move the stairs! Sarah pushes Tim through the doorway, letting him go in front. He catches onto the stairs, pulling himself up out of the water. Just in time, Sarah lifts herself out of the water, with behind her through the doors, the giant head of the Tylosaurus rises out of the water, missing her by inches. Slamming against the stairs, which bend at the bottom. Quickly Sarah continues climbing, letting herself fall back on her metallic grating above, panting, resting on her back. The water below rises up quickly, coiling up the tube, Ooh. coming up to them. Guess there's no time to rest now! Tim pulls her up on her feet to continue, and they run back through the passageway, continuing into the right tunnel, up the stairs leading up to the service. On a beach on Isla Matanceros, Marty Guterres is looking out over the ocean, watching pelicans fly by, soaring over the ocean. He sees a supply ship passing by in the distance, to the north, when his pilot approaches him through the jungle. Senor, we just good clearance for takeoff. The restriction is lifted, but we must take road south of Sorna, around US fleet. Sure, let's go back. I've seen enough of these islands. He turns and follows his pilots into the jungle, back to their helicopter. On Isla Sorna, from down the tunnels, tired, wet and panting, Tim and Sarah reach the top of the stairs, leading into a small building, a maintenance shed. They move out of the shed, surrounded by jungle. In a short distance, they see the fires dying, where the bombs had dropped. Sarah moves for the jungle, hoping that maybe her father survived and is out there. Dad? Then Tim spots Jerry Harding lying on the ground. Sarah, there. Dad? They run towards Jerry Harding lying on his back. Dad! Sarah. Jerry Harding is alive, but badly wounded by the blast. His clothes bloody red, his breathing ragged, his voice hoarse. You... you came back. How? It's okay, I'm here now. We're going to get you out of here. Jerry tries to move, lifting his arm to his chest. Easy, calm down, stay calm. Anything I can do? Sarah looks around. See if we can build him a stretcher. Tim starts looking around. Jerry has moved his hand inside his jacket, taking out the disc and the sample of the cure, which are still intact. Take this, Sarah. Okay. So give it, give it to Henry. The cure? Dr. Wu mentioned to get it. Uh -oh. Men led by fear, destroying that which they fear. Never conquer, never learning to see the, the beauty, the joyous wonder of its miracles. He's raving. Sarah hands the disc and cure to Tim, keeping her attention for her father. Dad, stay with us. Magic. It's been an, an, an adventure. <sighs> Letting out his dying breath, Jerry's body goes limp. Dad, no! Sarah, I'm really sorry, but we can't stay here. We don't know what's out there. Help me move him! I can't leave him here! Suddenly they hear a helicopter passing south of Sorna. What's that? From the helicopter, Marty Guterres is looking out at the burning village on Sorna as they pass the island on the south. What did they do here? Senor, look! I see it! 
It looks like they dropped a few bombs out there. No, senor. People. Peter is also supposed to two people a few hundred yards away from the burning jungle, waving with flares to attract the attention. My god, you're right! Sarah and Tim are looking at the helicopter. Tim waiting with the last flares they had left from the case they found at the boathouse. Over there. Did they see you? I don't know. Yes, yes! They're coming back! <laughs> Thank god! The helicopter approaches and lowers down on the spot near Sarah Harding and touches down. A loud noise of the turning rotor blades in the airflow hitting the surrounding grass and trees. The terrace opens the door and looks back at the pilot. Just need the engine running on standby, I'll be right back! Ducking low, his hands over his head. Guterres runs towards Sarah and Tim's position, both trying to move Jerry's body towards the helicopter. Guterres looks at the man they're carrying. What's the matter with him? It's a father. We couldn't save him. I'm so sorry. Okay, I think we can take him. You need help? We got this. Suddenly a loud roar comes from the jungle behind Guterres. Past the helicopter on the map. And the Spinosaurus steps onto the plane, some distance behind the helicopter. Hesitating at the noise the helicopter is making, and the flames coming from the jungle a little further away. Oh, jeez! What the hell is that? Okay, we could use a hand. Come on! Quickly, Guterres runs for Tim and Sarah, supporting Jerry's body as they move for the helicopter. The ground shakes, but Tim sees the spino is not moving, keeping distance from the fire on the right of the helicopter. A Tyrannosaurus, a buck, comes roaring onto the plane, followed by a second, a female, both charging the spinosaurus. The pilot of the helicopter opens the passenger side door, looking white. Come on, hurry! I'm not staying here much longer. Behind the helicopter, the Spinosaurus bites the neck of the buck as the female of T-Rex pulls the Spino by the tail, making it let go of the buck, twisting and trying to attack her instead. Tim, Sarah and Gutierrez move quickly for the helicopter. Tim gets in the back, helping with Jerry and Sarah. Sarah follows Tim inside the back. Terrace moves to the passenger side door and also gets in. The fighting trio of dinosaurs is turning in circles, the spino waving its arms and clawing for the rexes. They circle close to the helicopter, growling and screeching, almost running into them. Guterres clicks the seatbelt closed. Go! As the helicopter lifts off, the female pushes her head against the side of the spinosaurus, its arms held between the teeth of the buck, causing the spinosaurus to fill in its side right underneath the helicopter, still hanging low. The Spinosaurus snaps at the helicopter but misses. The buck moves for the throat of the Spinosaurus, almost hitting the helicopter as it comes finally clear. The Rex grabs the Spinosaurus throat between its jaws, biting down hard. The Spinosaurus squeals and drops its jaws, its body going limp. And when the T-Rex buck looks up after the helicopter, it's already high up in the air. The female moves to the buck and brushes gently, lovingly against the buck's chest. He looks down at his female and rests his head on hers for a moment, before they walk off together into the jungle, leaving the Spinosaurus on the plane. From the helicopter, Tim at the window side and Sarah next to him both look down on the fallen Spinosaurus. Look! They didn't kill it! It's getting up! Weakened, the Spinosaurus pushes itself up and slowly, awkwardly limps off in the opposite direction of the two Rexes. The body of Jerry Harding is lying on the ground of the helicopter, and Sarah looks back. Seeing a woolen blanket, she pulls it out from behind her, covering her father. It starts to rain again, and smoke billows up from the fires on the island, and the fires die out. The helicopter turns right to cross the island back to the south and in the direction of the mainland. Then Sarah looks up her window, seeing the marine ship northwest of the island sailing north to catch up with the boat Tim reacts shocked like waking up from a dream bloody hell I completely forgot Terrace looks back at her from the front seat what is it we have to catch up with a boat up north the navy ship why no no the one it's tailing we need to inform them of something critical 